In this lecture, we'll continue our examination of C's integer type zoo, including a look at what happens when you count too high or too low. Memorizing the limits of the various integer types is a good idea, but you don't want to stick those big values as naked constants in your code. So C provides a standard header file, limits.h. Include this file and you get defined constants for the maxima and minima of all the integer types. These take the form uh, uh, type underscore max uh, or type underscore min, e.g. Uh, shirt max here for uh, the maximum short or uh, int min and here for the minimum signed int, etc. The types are abbreviated and in particular the use of shirt instead of short is uh, a little bit irritating and an example of the idiosyncratic naming conventions that prevailed in C's days. Evidently, vowels were not trendy in the 1970s. And of course, there is no u long mint, u int, or u long min, I'm sorry, u int min, u shirt min, etc. At question one here, just to see if you're awake, why are those constants missing? Are we supposed to memorize those minimum values without use of a constant? Coming back from what I hope is a short pause, uh, the smallest valuable store, uh, value storable in any unsigned type of integer is simply zero. So there's no need to make a special constant for it. The code example has uses of the limits.h constants scattered about it. For instance, uh, on line 6, we assign the highest value for a short into uh, s. And on line 11, we uh, double that and uh, assign it into us to illustrate that an unsigned short can contain at least twice the positive value that a signed short can. We do the same for ints and uh, unsigned ints on lines 7 here and uh, 12 there. The printfs on lines 15 and 16 print the results of our doubling experiments on unsigned values, and they illustrate in the output that, uh, in fact, the positive range of an unsigned int is actually one more than twice that of a signed one. Again, as you can see down in the, uh, in the output here, the twice int max and the u int max, the twice short max and the u short max. And again, note we're using the percent %u format specifier for unsigned values, as we mentioned in the prior segment. Now the printf on lines 18 and 19 here does something interesting. It adds 1 to the maxima for signed and unsigned ints and also subtracts 1 from their minima printing the result. So we have i with the unsigned max adding 1 and then just the constant u int max plus 1 and u int min minus 1 and then a sort of odd uh, thing here with o u. Uh, more on that in a moment but it does subtract 1 from the minimum of 0 for an unsigned uh, integer. Going past the integer's range by adding to the maximum or subtracting from the minimum is called integer overflow. Technically, the result is undefined, but on almost all systems, adding 1 to a max value results in a wraparound back to the minimum value, and subtracting 1 from the minimum results in a wraparound back to the max. To uh, see what I mean, look at the uh, output of that printf and see that, uh, for instance, uh, i plus 1 results in the minimum integer value, and u int max plus 1 results in zero, the minimum for unsigned int, of course. Likewise, uh, int min minus one uh, results in int max. And uh, subtracting one from an unsigned zero value results in uh, u int max. More on that OU again in a moment. It's as if the integer line, or integer number line, had a, a wormhole jump from maximum back to minimum and, and vice versa, which in fact is not far from the truth, as we'll see in the next lecture. The practical impact of this is that if you push the value in an integer too high or too low, you get a sudden jump to the opposite end of the number line. There's no easy way to catch this problem while a program runs. You just plan carefully to avoid integer overflow. And note that this applies even to intermediate results. The output of line 20 here, for instance, if you look at it, should mathematically be 1 billion, which is well within the limits of an int. But we get a bizarre negative output instead down here. And uh, that's because the uh, 1 million 
times 3,000 intermediate computation results in 3 billion, which overflows the integer range, giving a large negative value, which large negative value we then divide by 3 to get a somewhat smaller negative value, which is what was output. It's not enough for the final result to be in range. All intermediate results must be also. But C will help you out a bit on this. Any expression that works on small integers, like shorts or cares, automatically does all intermediate computations using the full int size. It's a rare CPU these days that does any math at all on values less than four bytes long anyhow. So if you write short S1 equals 1,000, S2 equals 1,000, and you multiply S1 times S2 for a result of a million, the multiplication will be done as an integer operation, with S1 and S2 copied into a temporary full-sized ints. In this case, for instance, the size promotion avoids what would be overflow if the multiplication were only two bytes, since a million is past the range of a short. So, um, question two here. If I had instead computed int max plus five minus six on uh, line 20 instead, as uh, shown in the comment here, it uh, would correctly have printed uh, the value that is one less than int max, even though the intermediate value with the plus five clearly overflows. So why does that work out okay in such an instance? Again, coming back from a bit of a pause there, it overflows to the negative side when you add the five, but then it overflows back to the positive side when you subtract the six. This is a case of two wrongs making a right, but it's still bad style and it qualifies as an unlucky bug. So what's with the OU here on uh, line 19? We want an unsigned integer result for our experiment there, but the constant zero is not unsigned. Constants have types just like variables, and unless you indicate otherwise, integer constants have type signed int, and floating point ones have type double. Had we just used zero, our subtraction would have been a signed computation and thus simply equal to minus one, instead of an overflowing unsigned computation. To specify constants of other types than the default, you add suffix letters to indicate that they are of some other type than, say, signed int. The uh, u suffix indicates unsigned. Uh, a long, or an l suffix, I'm sorry, indicates long, and uh, a ul indicates unsigned long. So the ou in our code is an unsigned zero, the zero u is an unsigned zero, and that causes the subtraction to be in unsigned mode and, and thus to overflow. There are no suffixes for short because the automatic intermediate computation promotion that we described earlier makes such a constant moot. Even if you could write 42s, it would get pumped up to an int as soon as you did any operations on it anyway. Now, line 22 shows how to use scanf with different integer types. Scanf is very sensitive to integer type and provides a different format specifier for signed and unsigned shorts, ints, and longs. As you can see from the code here, uh, signed and unsigned shorts require percent %hd and percent %hu format specifiers, and signed and unsigned longs uh, require percent %ld and uh, percent %lu. Unsigned ints require the already described uh, percent %u specifier. The hd and hu for shorts deserve some explanation here. Uh, somewhat laughably, the h stands for half-sized. If you expected a percent %s, by the way, recall that that's already used for strings. This is yet another example, along with the shirt abbreviation and other C oddities, of what you get from a couple of guys hacking out a language in 1970, which they never expected would be used by millions of developers 40 years hence. You never know when you're building something that'll become an international standard, so choose your abbreviations carefully. And another little Kernahan and Ritchie design mistake is the absence of any format specifier for reading a care as a numerical value. There's percent %c, of course, but that reads one keyboard character and puts the corresponding ASCII code into the care variable. If uh, you wanted to enter 123 and put that into a care variable as a numerical value, your only choice is to first read it into a larger integer and then copy the large integer into the care. With all this scanf and printf talk, this seems a reasonable time to ask you to do a bit of research on those functions. For all its awkward, don't forget the ampersand pickiness, Scanf is a remarkably powerful tool, and few pro C programmers understand its abilities as well as they should. 
And the same goes for printf. So look up the full set of format specifier rules for these functions in KNR or an online resource and answer these questions. Question three here. Write a scanf that reads lines that comprise an integer ID, an intervening string of an unspecified number of dashes, and a floating point value, as shown here in the transcript. And I'll copy it off onto the diagram for those not looking at the transcript. We're talking about a line that might look like that. Put the int into a short named s and the floating point value into a double named d and read in the dash string, but don't store it in any variable since it's just garbage. There's a way to tell scanf to do all of those things in one call. To look up how to do specialized content strings and assignment suppression in particular. Coming back from a pause here, the uh, Need will be here for three. We'll, ha we'll have a need for three format specifiers here. So the first is for the short, and that of course would be percent %hd. The third one for the floating point is percent %lf. And be sure you understand that percent %f alone is not okay here, and why. The middle one, the dashed string, is the real challenge, though. We need to specify a string comprised only of dashes. This is uh, percent bracket dash bracket and we need to tell scanf to read it but ignore it to suppress assignment and uh, we don't even supply a variable or won't even supply a variable into which to read it so that's percent star f and the full scanf then wrapping around that would uh, look about like this So there you go. And moving on to question four here. If you got most but not all of the format specifiers for question three, you still did pretty well. Now that we've seen a little more of what scanf can do, though, here's another problem. I have a series of input words that begin with non-digit sequences and end with digits. So no intervening space there. So for instance, uh, the input words might be A, B, C, uh, 42, or uh, D, dash, F, uh, 496. Write a scanf that reads one of these input words, skipping the alphabetic string, but reading the number into an int. And note that the lack of space between the two parts means a percent %s would simply read the entire thing up to the next blank, and that won't work. So coming back from a uh, pause there, you need to read a string comprising only non-digits. So it'll stop at the first digit. And that would be, oh, and you also need to suppress its assignment, by the way. So that would be uh, percent. And then up arrow, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like that. And the full scanf then does that suppressed string followed by a percent %d and reads that into, say, integer i. So having beaten scanf to death, now let's turn our attention to printf. Write me a printf that prints an integer from a variable val, but it does so in a field width that is determined by another integer width. If you recall an earlier LMQ, you know this might be done by hand building a format string. But there's a much more direct way, using a single printf call with the right format specifier string. So coming back from a pause there as well, let's uh, write out what we need here. In printf, you can use a star for field width. And if you do, you then supply an integer parameter that gives the field width, but is not itself printed out. Quoting, for instance, from Kernahan and Ritchie, page 244. Width or precision or both may be specified as star, in which case the value is computed by converting the next argument. So for our case, we'd have printf, quote, percent star d, and we give width to fill in the missing field width and val to actually be printed out. 